So after last night's edition of Impact Wrestling on Access TV, there is a ton of Impact news to get into, but we're going to start off with the Iconics because this is a tag team that has long been rumored to be joining Impact Wrestling, especially after they were released by WWE this past April. Of course, they were amongst the budget cuts due to, I guess, the pandemic, I guess how WWE is framing it, but they were part of the budget cuts this past April. They were released by WWE, surprisingly, I think in the minds of many, but since then, a lot of people said, well, where are they going to go next he's going to be two stars in the world of professional wrestling that certainly are going to be in demand due to their talent and due to their charisma their personality their ability on the mic there's been lots of discussion will they go to AEW of course Peyton Royce's partner Sean Spears is part of the AEW roster or will they go to Impact Wrestling Impact Wrestling has a strong knockouts division and a knockouts tag team division of course the Iconics being a female tag team you would think there's an obvious uh, way into that company for them and obviously they would be big stars and impact wrestling well they recently both of them uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay of the Iconics appeared on the Busted Open radio show and discussed a wide variety of topics considering their post WWE future what they want to do as a tag team going forward and they even specifically spoke about joining Impact Wrestling or AEW so as far as staying together as a tag team this is what Peyton Royce had to say quote we definitely want to stay together we want to move forward together um he said just like we said in the first episode of the off her chops which is their podcast we're just most comfortable together we can play off each other so easily we don't even have to talk about what we're going to do we just go out there and it just becomes naturally uh, to us because we have so much history together i think that's when it's organic uh, that it's obviously better when, than when it's scripted so we definitely want to move forward to character off the chops we're so excited we've been wanting to do this for a while so it was like the first thing we found out uh, when we were getting the sack we were like right let's do the podcast and we're kind of moving forward with that straight away so we're excited about that so they were on there plugging the podcast but once they got uh, asked more about the possibility of companies to go to they were asked specifically about impact wrestling about AEW, which companies and promotions the iconics would both be interested in signing with now both said the decision would be a tough one but both Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, however, made sure to reference two particular promotions that they would be interested in working with. This is what Peyton Royce had to say, quote, I think it's tough, for example, AEW. I feel like we could really help their women's division, though they don't necessarily have a women's tag team division. But I feel we have the, that TV experience that we could bring to the division and help build that up. And then with Impact, they have a women's tag team division as well as an established knockouts division that I feel we can easily slip into. So it's like I feel like we have a lot to offer to both of them and I don't know. Now, Billy Kay, when asked, she concurred with her partner while also talking about how fun the time period this will be. Ultimately, she and Peyton want fans to be guessing on what their next move will be. Billy Kay said, quote, it's tough. It's tough to figure out where you think would be the best fit because we are wrestlers. Uh, but then we are heavy, heavily personalities and character. And we love that. So I think it's just blending the two like we always have and just figuring out which company we'd be better in, uh, AEW or Impact. Uh, that's the th that's the fun thing. There are so many po uh, possibilities and that's what's exciting to us. There's a possibility of an Aussie trio with Tennille Dashwood and Impact Wrestling. There's the possibilities of us being a tag team somewhere else. There's just possibilities and we have to keep it exciting. We still have a while before we can do anything. So we're just trying to get the most information that we can and figure out the best move for us. And and like and like and I like to keep the people guessing and keep them on their toes. So they've spoken about the possibility of going to AEW and Impact Wrestling. Look, obviously Peyton Royce, it was it's interesting there because Peyton Royce was the first to mention AEW before moving on to Impact, whereas Billy Kay kind of focused more on Impact Wrestling. The important thing the important thing is that they've said that the desire is them for them to stay together. I think that was the the discussion previously, wasn't it? Was that were they even going to be together? Obviously, in WWE, for the majority of their run, they were together. And then they were randomly split up on Monday Night Raw. It was such a random way they were split up and so bizarre when it came to the Iconics. That obviously, they're a tag team for ages, former women's tag team champions. Probably even didn't get the run with the tag team championships that they deserved. They won it and then barely defended it before they lost it. But they were still a tag team for a while and they kind of flirted with getting back into that women's tag team championship picture. And then on a random episode of Monday Night Raw, one of those graphics pops up at the bottom right hand corner of the screen or whatever. And it says uh, loser has to split up. And I think it was was it 
the Iconics versus the Riot Squad or something like that. And obviously the Iconics lost and they had to split up. And then the rumors and reports came out saying Vince McMahon sees big things in Peyton Royce. He split up the Iconics because he wants to push Peyton Royce. And you kind of went to yourself, well... Okay, I'd rather the Iconics not be split up, but if there are big plans in place for Peyton and Royce, I can understand it. The issue was there were no plans. There were no plans for anything. They were split up. Billy Kay was drafted to SmackDown. Peyton Royce was drafted to Raw. What did the, the big plans that they had for Peyton Royce? Put her in another tag team. They split up an actual legitimate tag team with real chemistry, real friendship. They'd grown up together in, in Australia, trained together in Florida. They split them up and they put Peyton Royce in another tag team with Lacey Evans where there was no chemistry and no kind of personality bouncing off each other. And, and if anything, the person who suffered the most from the split with the Iconics was the one that was reportedly meant to be get, getting pushed. Peyton Royce, she did nothing on Raw, absolutely nothing. Billy Kay, on the other hand, the one they didn't have plans for, was at least kind of featured on SmackDown. She was handing out the resume, being entertaining. I think, frankly, I think if there was a live crowd in attendance, Billy Kay would still be with WWE today because she would have been so over with the audience because she was one of the most entertaining things on SmackDown every single week. And I think if there was a live crowd there, I think they wouldn't have had a choice but to keep her because she would have been over. And I think she'd be doing far more today in WWE than just sitting on the sidelines waiting to figure out whether to go to AEW or Impact Wrestling. I really do. Nevertheless, what is WWE's loss, I think, will be either AEW or Impact Wrestling's gain. And their comments certainly are interesting there, aren't they? I think that Peyton Royce is right in the sense that whilst they could offer a lot to AEW and could help that division and they do have television experience my point has been and I know that I, I say this all the time and I know people kind of get upset sometimes when I say this but if I'm if I'm Peyton Royce or I'm Billy Kay or I'm any female wrestler any female wrestler that's been released by WWE or even hasn't been in WWE but is looking where to sign if you have the option between AEW and Impact Wrestling there's only ever one winner for me and that's to go to Impact Wrestling the reason is I think you get a better opportunity there that's it the talent that AEW have on their on their women's roster is very very good very good you've got Hikaru Shida Britt Baker Thunder Rosa Serena Deeb Ty Conti Anna Jay Abaddon the list can go on and on uh Rebel as well as there as well they've got a ton a ton of fantastic female talent there it's just about the opportunity you're going to going to receive and you know, I mentioned this before where I spoke about you've got to give your, your talent the opportunity to succeed and you've got to put females in the main event. And I did receive a comment, which I did think is fair, when they said, well, you know, you can't just put women in the main event for the sake of putting them in the main event. They have to earn it. They have to be draws and they have to be talented enough to carry that main event position which is fine, but they do have that talent there. And I'm not saying I'll put the AEW women in the main event just for the sake of putting them in the main event. I'm saying give your talents opportunities to succeed and prove themselves. It's sink or swim. But I'm telling you, if you put these talents in there, they will swim. And the evidence was there with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker when they had the lights out match. That was fantastic. And everyone was raving about it. And it's the best match of Britt Baker's career. And everyone's patting AEW on the back at the time saying, well done, look at them. They did the first ever women's main event and they knocked it out of the park. It shouldn't take was it two and a bit years of the company's existence to get to that point they should be doing it since the beginning because they've got the talent and if I am the Iconics I, I do look at AW and I say well maybe maybe I will get the opportunity maybe I can be the one to really help them progress the women's division in AEW which is progressing don't get me wrong it is progressing they do have at least on some occasions multiple female matches in the show I think it helps having two championships now on that broadcast it's not just the AEW Women's World Championship it's the NWA Women's World Championship as well Serena Deeb I think that kind of forces AEW's hands to say look you've got another title you've got to defend it so whether it's pay-per-views i know we're going to get an AEW women's world championship match sunday at double or nothing between Ikaru Shida and Britt Baker but we're also going to get an NWA Women's World Championship match on the pre-show on the buy-in Serena Deeb versus Rio and I think again having two championships kind of forces AEW's hand but still the presentation isn't to where I think it should be and, and I don't know how long that's going to be the case especially when you've got an EVP like Cody Rhodes who said last year at Full Gear during one of his media calls he said not every match needs a storyline heading into it the issue is he was saying that about a Women's World 
championship match. If that is a male world championship match, you never say that. You never say that about a, a match of Kenny Omega versus whoever for the AEW World Championship. You don't say, well, not every match needs a storyline. Yes, they do when it's major world championship matches. Cody Rhodes matches certainly need a storyline. He's got a really bizarre one when it's America versus the United Kingdom right now. That's his big storyline. So if he says that about women's wrestling, what does that indicate? Now, I, I, and, uh, you know, maybe, like I said, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay feel like they can help add to that division and they can add to any division they go in, whether it's in AEW, whether it's in Impact Wrestling, whether it's in Ring of Honor, they will certainly add to that division and they will certainly elevate that division. There's no doubt about it. But if they're looking for a better opportunity, if they're looking for a place where they're going to have more chances of succeeding and more chances of making an impact, it's in Impact Wrestling. And that's because, as they mentioned, not only have they got a real strong knockouts division in terms of singles wrestling, which is a pillar of the company. It's a cornerstone of the company. It's heavily featured in every broadcast. It's heavily featured in every pay-per-view. You've got a chance of main eventing shows, main eventing TV specials, main eventing even pay-per-views against the right opponents. But you've also got a tag team division in there now, a thriving knockouts tag team division with legitimate tag teams like Fire and F Flavor, like Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering, regardless of how how long that lasts for um like to dashwood and taylor wilde all of those kind of names those tag teams it's expanding it's growing and you would think if they're looking at the opportunities available to them right now and if i'm impact wrestling i'm sure impact wrestling have reached out to both peyton royce and billy Kay, and i'm sure they've said look if you come in we've got this knockouts tag team division that we relaunched earlier this year if you come in you're gonna get the bouts there's no way they don't come in and don't win the championships fairly quickly but they'll also say look you'll be elevating this tag team division you'll be you'll be the face of this knockouts tag team division there's no doubt and there will be opportunities to have great matches and opportunities for the singles knockouts championship against the likes of Diana Parazzo you've got to Neil Dashwood there as they mentioned fellow Australian they can do something there as well there's there's a lot of possibilities there and um, I just think Impact has a greater focus on women's wrestling and if it comes down to you know, opportunity and 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 a desire to wrestle and desire to really make a difference. Then I think I think Impact Wrestling is the option. But look, who knows? Who knows if they feel that they can they can help AEW? And I'm sure AEW would make an offer. I just think in terms of opportunity, the better opportunity is an impact for them. Only time will tell. But I, if I if you if you said Owen, oh, where do you think they'll head up right now? I think it's Impact. I I do think it's Impact because I just think they've got, you know, women's tag team wrestling. You know, isn't that there aren't many places that are really pushing that. Yes, obviously, WWE now have got their Women's Tag Team Championships, but on their main roster, frankly, the Women's Tag Team titles in recent history have been a bit of a joke, to be honest with you. I I, I think that's fair. You know, it, when Sasha Banks and, and Bailey held them last year, they weren't a joke. Now it kind of feels a bit like they are in terms of the presentation. And um, the, the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships, I think, are strong. I think are very strong. And I think the they've got a great women's tag team division. But it does feel like that whichever company really gets that right in terms of a, a real strong women's tag team division, they'll be a little bit ahead of the curve. And by having the Iconics coming and building that around them, they give themselves a chance impact. So like I said, I just, I just feel that that is the most likely destination for them. Only time will tell, though, of course. Now, as I mentioned last night, Impact Wrestling was on Access TV for another episode, and man, oh man, did we get a lot of announcements during that show about matches that are to come in the near future, whether it's against all odds or next week, the fabled uh, X Division Championship match. The X Division Championship match that we were all talking about, what's it going to be? It had been widely reported, hadn't it, for a while about um, we were going to see a really fun X Division title match, and we didn't really know what it was going to be. As far as this X Division Championship match, we heard lots of reports. I think it was Fightful announced that uh, there had been an X Division title match at the most recent set of uh, Impact Wrestling television tapings. And people were raving about it. People were saying how great it was going to be. And they were talking about it. And they said it lasted 60 minutes. Uh, we then later found out in an update by Fightful on their Fightful Select Patreon service. Be sure to check that out. Uh, it had been updated to say that this was actually an Iron Man match. And we were basically waiting as Impact Wrestling fans are go going, okay... We know we're going to get this great match. People are raving about it. People are talking about it. Who's it going to be? I think most people assumed it was going to be Josh Alexander for the X Division Championship. But who would his opponent be? Well, now we know because it's been announced that Josh Alexander will defend the X Division Championship for the first time in a 60-minute Ironman match against TJP on Before the Impact next week. TJP, of course, is a former X Division champion. He looks to add a third reign with the X Division Championship. 
Of course, for Josh Alexander, this will be his second second title defense after winning it at Impact Rebellion. He also defended it against El Fantasma at Under Siege uh, earlier this month. So this is going to be very, very, it's, it's very exciting, very exciting. I think it's funny because I did, um, on one of the videos, one of the Impact videos, and I'll call myself out about it, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I did a video about talking about this, saying about potential opponents, all that kind of stuff. TJP was one of the opponents, I said. Um, I just didn't, I didn't feel like it would be him. I, well, I, it was a possibility. It was a possibility. The reason why I was like, I hope it isn't him is just because I think other matches would have been more interesting, frankly. I would have been more interested in a Josh Alexander, Chris Bay, 60-minute Ironman match or a Josh Alexander, Ace Austin, 60-minute Ironman match. I just, I would have been more interested. That, that's the only thing. And, and I said this before, I'll say it again about TJP. Look, I don't necessarily agree with all of his... Um, personal views or his political views i think uh, certainly on a variety of uh, occasions over the course of the last 12 months some of the stuff he said on twitter is just bizarre and i don't agree with myself personally it doesn't change that he's a good pro wrestler and it would appear that despite some of the things he says on social media he still you know you can't like i've mentioned before you can't fire anyone because of it from your job because of your political views and it would appear that it doesn't cross over into the workplace so it is what it is there's no doubt he's a very good professional wrestler that there is no doubt about that and he's obviously been doing this a real long time he goes back to the tna days of impact wrestling so he's been doing it for a while and i have no doubt the match next week is going to be very very good now essentially what it's going to be is it's going to be the majority of this iron man match is going to take place on before the impact and then essentially it's going to conclude in the opening moments of Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Now, I have no doubts the match is going to be excellent. Reportedly, there were a ton of people backstage at the most recent set of Impact Wrestling television tapings talking about how great this match was and it's one of the best matches in recent Impact Wrestling history. I have no doubt about it. Iron Man matches, if you get the story right, they can be very good. Very good because... Obviously, the way is it, I would assume it's going to end is it's going to be very close towards the closing moments, whether it's Josh Alexander just in front or TJP just in front, and then we just get right at the end and someone nicks it. That's how I, w I would assume that it works, but I'm very excited for it. Again, would TJP have been the opponent that I would have necessarily gone with? No, but it doesn't change it about it being a great match. And TJP is, like I said, is very good at what he does. Very, very good at what he does. So I have no doubts of the quality of the match. It's fantastic to see the Exhibition Championship getting a spotlight, continuing to get a spotlight. Uh, I was critical last year of maybe it kind of losing its identity a little bit, but this is how you get it back, right? This is how you get it back to the level that it was at before is by doing great stuff like this. And Josh Alexander, man, he just goes from strength to strength. I've said before, the guy's a future world champion. There's no doubt in my mind. The guy's a future world champion. As long as he sticks around with Impact Wrestling, I know his contract expires next year, I think February, around that time next year. So time will only tell about that. But very excited about this match. Should be something very special and definitely a match of the year contender. And to be honest, from a marketing point of view as well, it's very smart by Impact Wrestling, really, isn't it? You know, they want to get more people to tune into this before the Impact show. How do you do it? You put an X Division title match on there. On top of that, you put an Iron Man match on there. That's going to get people to tune in more so than usual. So I'm excited to see what they do, how they pull it off. I would expect Josh Alexander to win, of course, but um, it's going to be very exciting and uh, definitely going to be tuning in for that one next week. Speaking of things to tune in for, we have some matches announced for Against All Odds. Uh, we know that Kojima will be in action at Against All Odds in a match that I'm very, very excited for. I'm very excited uh, for this one because... On last night's episode of Impact Wrestling, New Japan pro wrestling icon Satoshi Kojima issued a challenge towards one half of the new Impact Tag Team Champions Joe Doring in a match at Against All Odds. Now, this came after Joe Doring's group, Violent by Design, uh, cut a promo in the ring on how they plan to take over the whole industry. This included North America, you know, United States, Mexico, Canada, Europe, the United Kingdom, and then Japan. And then suddenly the lights went out. Out came Kojima. He disagreed with this statement walked straight up to Doring and issued a challenge for a match in two weeks at Against All Odds. Now, later on in the program, Joe Doring gladly accepted Kojima's match proposal. Now, of course, these two men have a ton of history, given that Joe Doring's career was prim you know, prominently in Japan. They have parallel careers in Japan. They are both two-time All Japan Pro Wrestling Triple Crown Heavyweight Champions. Kojima with a 678-day reign and Joe Doring with a 315-day reign, respectively. Uh, until their clash, Kojima will face... 
Doring's ally Dina uh, in a singles match next week next week on Impact Wrestling on Access TV. This will be Kojima's official in-ring debut for the company. So I'm very excited about this one. And uh, I thought the I thought the promo was well done. You know, Eric Young, um, for a guy, by the way, well, I, this is a bit of a sidebar here, but for a guy in Eric Young that's got a, uh, a torn ACL, he looks in tremendous shape. He really does. I guess you can just do upper body stuff, right? But he looks in really t- tremendous shape. So hopefully he's going to return quicker than anticipated. But this one's going to be great. I'm not, I, I'll be totally honest, I'm not totally familiar with a ton of Kojima stuff in the same vein. I wasn't totally familiar with a ton of, a ton of Joe Doring stuff before he showed up in Impact Wrestling. I just, I, if it's if it follows the traditional Japanese style, these two guys are going to beat the hell out of each other. I've watched a little bit of All Japan stuff in the past, and again, if they follow that kind of that kind of style, just beating the hell out of each other, this is going to be a real lot of fun. A real lot of fun, and it's it's reason to tune into or to against all odds. So I'm very excited for this one. And uh, like I said before, when it comes to Kojima, the way these New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact Wrestling relationships and appearances are kind of working is that a New Japan Pro Wrestling talent will work a TV taping or a set of TV tapings for Impact. That includes two, three weeks worth of Impact Wrestling television plus uh, an Impact Plus event. That's what happened with El Phantasma. That's what's happening with Kojima. He's facing, uh, obviously, Dina next week and he's going to be facing Joe Doring out against all odds. And I'm very excited to see it. I'm very excited to see it. I mean, if you weren't tuning in to Against All Odds for the Moose Kenny Omega match, this would certainly be a reason to tune in. So I'm ex- I'm exceptionally excited about this one because I think they're going to beat the hell out of each other. And frankly, with no audience there, we're going to hear some brutal strikes. I mean, just some brutal strikes, probably some brutal uh, chops, some absolutely gnarly forearms to the face. And I'm all, I'm here for it. I'm all here for it. So I'm really excited about this one. It's going to be a lot of fun. And speaking of other matches announced uh, for the Against All Odds show, uh, the Knockouts champion Diana Perazzo will put the Knockouts championship on the line against Rosemary. Of course, last night, Perazzo was defeated by Rosemary during their 10 knockout tag team match. Uh, Rosemary, of course, is the first knockout in history to receive the championship under the Impact uh, banner while the company was transitioning from TNA to Impact back in 2016 to 2017. Now, obviously, they had to give a reason why to you know believe in this match and actually have stakes. That's why they had Rosemary defeat Deonna Parazzo last night. I'm not massive on that, to be honest, I, and because it would be very hypocritical for me to say otherwise. When they do it in WWE, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of when they do it in Impact. Oh, you got a title shot because you beat the champion. Come on. You can do other ways to do it. I like the way that AEW does it when they just they win matches and they build up the rankings in the same vein of UFC or boxing. How do you become a challenger for a title? You win matches over and over and over and over again, and then you go up the rankings, and then suddenly you can challenge for a title. That's the way I prefer to do it. That's not the way they did it here. But to be honest, uh, the way they've raised stakes for this one is by having Rosemary defeat Deanna Prizo. So at least there's an element of doubt in your mind. Could Rosemary win the title? I think the answer there is no. I don't expect Deanna Prizo to drop the championship anytime soon. The earliest would be Slammiversary. But frankly, I don't see who takes it off her unless it's a debuting new star from outside of the company, whether that's Chelsea Green, Mickey James, or maybe just one of the Iconics. I don't know. I would expect it to be someone like that. Otherwise, I see, I see no reason. I see no reason. Uh, to have Deonna Parazzo drop the championship anytime soon. So exciting stuff. There are some very exciting matches coming in the future. So whether it's the Iconics possibly showing up or the 60-minute Iron Man match for the X-Vision Championship next week, Kojima versus Joe Doring out against all odds or the Knockouts Championship out against all odds or, of course, Kenny Omega versus Moose out against all odds. This is going to be very, very exciting. So it's an exciting time to be a fan of Impact. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all of the news stories you've spoken about today? Of course, you've got the 60-minute Ironman match, Kojima, Knockouts Championship, and, of course, will the Iconics join AEW or Impact Wrestling? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about WWE, Impact Wrestling, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved with the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our video previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already please do subscribe to wrestling news 365 you can do that by clicking the bottom right corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or have you come across this video today and i'll speak for you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.